Now we have placed the letters of all these words without overlapping in the available div elements, right? So we could see that jam, sugar, butter, milk, rusk, egg, oats and bread. If you refresh, their positions and orientations get changed and words are getting displayed like this. Now in the empty spaces, we need to add some random letters. Then only this will look like a word search game, right? So next we are going to add some random letters at the available empty spaces. So how we can do that? Let me add a function for that. Function random letter. Okay. Within this, I am creating a variable alphabets equals. I am adding a string of all the alphabets. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So this contains the alphabets from A to Z. Next what we can do, let me specify return alphabets dot character at. I am going to return a random character from this string. So character at can be used to specify a character at the specified position. So here again I am going to use math.floor and within this math.random into 26. So 26 is the total length of this characters or this string. So when we multiply this number it will be a number between 0 and 25. So character at that particular position will be returned. Suppose this returns a value as 1, b will be returned. So this function will be returning a random alphabet. Okay. Now within this arrange game function, what I am going to do is that with this all the words will be added without overlapping. Right. After this, let me run the each method and let me pass dot individual which means that all the elements or the div elements having the class name individual will be selected and function key comma item what will be the item it will be html div elements that is dom elements so if i want to convert it into a jquery object i need to wrap it within dollar right so i am going to check if dollar item oh sorry if dollar item dot attr of data word so when we place a letter we are actually adding the data word attribute for j the data word attribute will be jam for a also it will be jam and for m also it will be jam so for all the letters sorry for all the developments having letters of these words we are adding data word attribute so if data word attribute is undefined means it is an empty div element so here i am going to check equal equals undefined then what i am going to do let me specify dollar this dot html i am going to call the function random letter so for each item which is not having the data word attribute this random letter function will be called and it will be set as the html of that particular div element now let me save this and show you let me refresh see we are seeing different letters now it looks like a word search game right we need to check for the word are you able to see any word now i could not find even a single word yes sugar is here s u g a r then butter is here b u t t e r so like this we have added some random letters in the empty spaces. So now we need to search for the words. So this is now looking like a word search game, right? Till we complete the game or till we complete the implementation of this word search game, let me add some colors to the correctly placed letters. So what we can do for that? Just to make the process easier. Otherwise, we will have to search for the words, right? So just to make it easier, what I'm going to do is that so when we add the letters let me copy this okay and specify dot css of background to be pink just for easy identification okay pink now let me save this and check the output let me refresh 
See, we are now seeing the words, letters in pink color and all the other spaces are occupied with some other random letter. Now we have implemented this part. Next, what is remaining in fact? We haven't written the logic for diagonal orientation, right? If you remember, we have done it only for column and row orientation. So let us try to implement it for diagonal as well. In the array, let me add diagonal as well as one value. So here, when we specify positions dot length, it will be three now. So row, column or diagonal can be selected. Then like this, we need to add one more condition for diagonal, right? So let us do that part at the end of this condition. Let me add else if orientation equal equals diagonal. What all conditions we need to check? In this row and column case, we just had two conditions. One is if there are enough number of spaces or developments and if there are not enough number of spaces. But when it comes to diagonal orientation, let us check that. Suppose we want to display the word butter, okay, in diagonal orientation. So suppose we get the starting value as this, that is the starting index as this, then there are enough number of div elements. B can be placed here, U can be placed here, T, T, E, R, right? Now suppose the value of start is here, that is this U's position is the starting for butter. So, B, U, T, T, E, we are not able to place the R, right? Because there is not enough number of column. Similarly, suppose we get the starting position as this. Then, B, U, T, T, E and R cannot be placed as there are not enough number of rows. Now, suppose it is here, which means that B, U, T, T, E, R, there are not enough number of rows or columns. So in all those cases we need to make adjustments. So there are four conditions actually. One is there are enough number of rows as well as enough number of columns. Second is there are enough number of rows but not enough number of columns. Then another is there are enough number of columns but not enough number of rows. And the fourth case is neither rows nor columns are enough. So, we need to check four conditions in case of diagonal. So, let us do that part now. One condition is both are there. So, let me copy this less than or equal to 12 if greater than 12, sorry less than or equal to 12 and let me paste the same. Okay, we need one more bracket here, right? So, here you can remove this. Let me remove this. See, now it is correct. So, both are less than or equal to 12 means there are enough number of spaces, right? Then what we can do, we can just specify new start equal to start as we have done in the previous case. Then, another condition is this one is greater than 12, okay? So, let me copy my column into 1 plus my array of i dot length is greater than 12. In that case, what we need to adjust? We need to adjust column itself because it is like here we are placing the starting letter. Then B is there, U, T, T, E, R. So, three more columns are needed, right? So, we need to adjust the column number itself, not like row and column orientation. In those cases, in case of column, we were adjusting row because column means O, A, T, S. So, there should be enough number of rows in fact. Similarly, for rows, there should be enough number of columns. But for diagonal, if the condition is for row, we need to adjust the row itself. So, here as we have written it for column, we need to adjust the column itself. So, my column into 1 plus my array of i dot length is greater than 12 means we need to adjust the value of column, right? So, what we can do, let me copy column statement, this one and also this one. Hope you understand the logic what I am trying to implement here. Okay, so new start is there. Similarly, we need to check for my row, right? So, let me copy this, paste it here 
and greater than 12. In that case, what we need to do? We need to adjust the position of row. So let me copy this and make adjustments where new row equals 12 minus my array of i dot length and this should be new row and this should be my column itself. Okay. Then the next condition is if both are greater than 12, right? So let me copy this statement. Okay. And both are greater than 12, which means there are not enough number of rows or enough number of columns. In this case, we need to adjust both row and column and get the new start. So let me copy this for column. Let me copy this for row and let me copy this and paste it here and adjust my column should be new column because column number and row number should be modified and accordingly we should get the new start value. And here we need to actually increment the value, right? The next letter is 1 in case of row, 12 in case of column and it should be 13 in case of diagonal. If you check here, suppose we place the first letter here, B is at 0 index, this is 11, 12 and 13, B, U should be placed here for butter, right? So the next letter should be 13. So here let me set the value of next letter to be 30. Then where else we need to modify? Also when we check the occupied function, here also we need to have one more condition that is else if orientation equal equals diagonal, right? Then increment by should be 13. That is for all the div elements at a gap of 13, we need to check whether a particular letter is already occupied that space. If it is occupied, we need to return status as occupied. Now let me refresh. See, we are seeing words in diagonal direction as well. See, sugar is displayed as diagonally. S-U-G-A-R. Also M-I-L-K. Then R-U-S-K. B-R-E-A-D. Like that. Refresh. See? Still we are seeing some words in diagonal direction. So by just modifying our logic, we could implement, we could display the words in diagonal direction as well. As you could see here, they are not even overlapping now. Oats, milk, this is of butter, rusk, sugar, bread, egg, jam. Even with pink color, we are getting confused in fact. Because here two E's are there, two G's are there. So I first thought it was displayed wrong. But this is of bread and this is of egg. Let me refresh. Again, butter, bread, sugar, egg. Only one word is got diagonal direction. Then here milk. Here egg. Bread. Then this is of sugar. This is of jam. This is of oats. Milk. Like that. So we have implemented the word search game interface. In fact, we are displaying the words in three directions. And also we have added letters at the empty spaces. Next what we need to do, we have to actually allow the user to click on these items to select the letters of the word and we should cross out already selected words. That part we will do in the next lecture.